Hey, how's everybody doing today? My name is Matthew from A Series of Little Efforts and we are back with another video. So we're back on our posture series today. It is week four. Um, the first three weeks we've covered specific types of postural issues. Um, actually, I found a really good picture that I want to put up here. Um, and it's, it really helps illustrate the ones we've already talked about and what we're going to cover moving forward. So let me just bring that up here and I'll be right back. Alright, so if we take a look at this picture, the first video we talked about thoracic kyphosis, which is the one in the middle there with the shoulders rounded forward. Um, we talked about opening up the chest and strengthening the back. And then in the second video we talked a little bit about sway back, which is the first the first one there, um, where the gentleman's hips are forward and his glutes are very weak. And then the third video, we talked about the texting neck, which was the one with the the fourth one there with the head forward. So we are going to talk about lumbar lordosis, but it's not today. Um, and we I also want to talk about uh, raised raised shoulders which I'm sure you know a lot of people out there with raised shoulders. Um, today, however, we're going to talk about foot position. So if we come back to normal here. There we go. So we're going to talk about four different foot positions and what we can do to compensate for these and what might be causing them. So the first is over and under pronation. Over pronation and under pronation are basically your ankle position on top of your foot. And then we're also going to talk about um, pointed toes and duck foot, which would be your toes pointing out relative to your midline and your toes pointing in. So if we take a look at this picture, keep in mind first of all that each of these images are the right foot, so don't get confused with left foot, right foot, it will look, it will look very confusing. Um, there is a neutral, um, which is right in the middle there, the black line, so that is, that's more ideal. Most people, however, as where the green lines are, uh, in the ones one away from the outside, are either pronated or well, over pronated or under pronated. Now in this picture they use the term supination. Uh, over supination is the same as under pronation. So try and keep that in mind as we talk about this. Just ignore this, the supination for now, it'll make it a lot easier to remember. So because it's the right foot, if you take a look at the far left here, the over pronation is where the inside of your foot is pushing down more on the ground. The under pronation which is the over supination in this picture, is where you're more in the outer part of your foot and putting more pressure on the outside. So if you want to take a look at this picture here, there we go, uh, this one will give you a better idea of what I was talking about. So the over pronation was the one where your ankle was coming more into the middle and you can see that in the far left hand side there. So when you say your feet are wet and you're walking on the on the pavement and you put your foot down, the ankle coming more into the middle will give you more of a full footprint. Then the neutral is obviously right there in the middle and then the under pronation or the supination uh, as in the last slide is more where you're right on the outside of your foot and the middle rarely if ever touches the ground. So what do these mean for you? Well, either of them can cause serious problems to the whole chain going up your body. Say for example you're going for a run and your foot is over pronating, so if you remember back to the diagrams is where your ankle comes into the middle. Um, if it's coming more into the middle, that's going to place a lot of strain on your knee. A lot of strain on your knee over you know maybe a short distance won't do you any harm or even walking but say you go for a half an hour run uh, on average a runner will take 90 strides a minute and uh, times that by 30 
all of a sudden you're taking a lot of steps. That's a, a lot of repetitive strain on your knee. Obviously now if you start to protect the knee, it's going to fire up into your hips, which is going to fire up into your lower back, which will go up into your neck, and the chain just continues. So same thing with the underpronation. You're going to be placing a lot of strain on different parts of your body and it's something that really long term can really start to affect you. So how are we going to fix this? The number one way to fix this is usually to get some sort of insole. So if you've ever been to a chiropractor, I'm sure they've recommended to you the idea of some sort of orthotic. Um, orthotics is kind of a hot topic right now. Uh, there's a lot of problems with chiropractors just recommending them to everybody instead of the people that need them. Uh, they are very expensive, but they usually, at least in Canada, are covered by healthcare, which is nice. But because of that, and because people know it's covered by healthcare, and their chiropractor says they need them, so they say, okay. Uh, a lot of times, people just quite honestly don't need to go that far. They're not necessary. And sometimes they're even causing more harm than good. So if it's a real issue, then yeah, of course, go ahead and get them. But not everybody needs orthotics. And I, pretty much everybody that's ever been to a chiropractor has been recommended to get orthotics. So just sort of use your best judgment in regards to that. I won't go into that into too much detail. Um, I don't want to upset any of the chiropractors out there. So moving on from there, let's get into what you can do on your own. So there are a lot of insoles out there. Um, I mean, I'm sure you've seen the cheaper ones. You can go to any running or walking store and try and find insoles. Um, those will help. It also depends on your running style. If you go to a good running shoe store, they should be able to help you with what type of shoe you should be wearing in order to get the best support for you. So this is mainly, I guess, for runners. Um, you will, obviously, your over and under pronation will affect you in walking, but it's not as much of a concern. It's more when you're running. If you're wearing a shoe that is for under pronators and you over pronate, you're only going to accentuate the problem. So really make sure that you're wearing the right shoes. I know for a lot of people out there, you know, oh, that shoe doesn't look the way I want it. I really want the bright yellow one over in the corner there. Um, but maybe that shoe's specifically for people that over pronate and you under pronate. So really make sure if they if the people recommend you get one or the other that you stick to those guidelines because it's super important and you can actually cause a lot of problems by going outside of that. If the store you go to isn't recommending um, whether, or at least telling you whether you over or under pronate, then at least go somewhere else and, or talk to a professional. Um, if you live in Toronto, give me a call and we'll go out and we'll take a look at your form and how you walk and how you run and we'll try and figure out which shoes would be best for you because it is something that long term can really have some crazy adverse effects. So, all right, let's wrap up on that and let's move into the pointed toes and the duck toes. All right, so is this how you walk? No, I'm just kidding. Hold on. Let me put up the right image here. All right, that's better. Don't mind my sense of humor there. Anyway, we uh, let's start on the right-hand side with the duck feet. So what I find is that normally people that walk with their toes out, it's usually caused by a problem in their feet. Uh, we sort of already talked about that, but well, the bigger issue is I want to move further up the kinetic chain. And basically what's happening is it's caused by poor posture. So poor posture and excessive sitting are creating an anterior pelvic tilt. So what does anterior mean? If you remember back to our video about the sway back, it's when the hips tilt forward. Um, and the so the front of the hips is going down and the back of the hips is going up. What is that causing? That's causing your glutes not to activate at all, which we discussed in that video as well. So actually, if you want to go back and watch that video, I will link it down in the description so you can go back and check it out. Um, so those the glutes not firing is basically forcing the muscles on the inside of your hips uh, to pick up the slack. 
when those overworked muscles get too tight, they start to pull your femur outward, and as a result, your feet turn out. At the other end of the spectrum, we have pointed toe syndrome. Also, this is known as pigeon toed. Uh, this is usually something that starts at a pretty young age and usually goes away as children start to mature out of um, to like out of infancy. So this, for the people that it does carry on into later life, uh, basically what's happening is it's an internal twist of the femur, which is the thigh bone, or an internal twist of the tibia, which is the shin bone. Um, it can also be a foot problem like the last one was, but we're going to just stick with the top two for now. Um, so there are a lot of surgical procedures for this and a lot of doctors will recommend a surgical procedure. Really the main issue with this is a lot of people with, with this issue tend to trip a lot over their own feet obviously because they're almost crossing over. So what tends to happen is the hips are very very tight and there's a lot of overdevelopment in the wrong parts of muscles. So I definitely would not recommend instant surgery. I know a lot of people like to go that route, um, but I just don't recommend it. I would try doing some physiotherapy first. A lot of people say that posture can't be fixed by working out, but as we've proven many times, not only myself, well, m many trainers, but especially um, at a series of little efforts, we spend a lot of time working on posture and every single time we've been able to correct it. So if you do have any questions, again, please leave them down in the comment section and I will try and expand as best I can. And again, also, if you're in the GTA, please give us a shout and we will book you in for a free appointment and we'll see what's going on and try and give you some advice that way as well. All right, so that's it for today. I'm going to actually put the other, the link for the video about the uh, sway back right up in this corner here. And please like, comment, subscribe as always. Leave me any questions down in the comment section. Uh, all your subscriptions are greatly valued. We will be back tomorrow with another video. I've actually already finished it, um, but I'm not going to post it until tomorrow just because I don't want to be putting out too many uh, in a day. So have a great day. We will see you again tomorrow. And yeah, that's it for today. Have a great day, guys. Bye.